Remember to turn on all notifications so you don't miss a video. Hirohiko Araki is the author of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, a manga and anime that I love. But does being a good mangaka mean that you understand how to teach the craft to others? He has a book titled Manga in Theory and Practice that I picked up a while ago. I only read about half of it before deciding that I didn't need it, but I want to return to it to analyze it. I'll be putting my story theory against his manga theory to see where we agree and disagree. I'll tackle the chapters over multiple videos if I see enough interest in this series. I'm gonna skip the intro and dive right into chapter 1, getting started. His first relevant advice is, make them turn the first page. He argues that the first page of your manga should be original and interesting. I agree with this. The first page in a manga should be interesting, but this only really applies to manga. For something like a film, once you pay, you're watching the whole thing. So how it starts isn't nearly as important as long as the overarching story is good. I love how he encourages studying many first pages of the best-selling manga. I always encourage doing research, but one thing that separates us is that he's focused on making a manga that will sell well, while my theory prioritizes making a good story, period. Before his goal of getting you to write a sellable manga, this advice rings true. Study but don't copy is the summary. Next, he says that you need a compelling title. The order of these steps is not one that I agree with. The first page and title should be nowhere near the start. I'd argue that you should either start with a plot, some characters, or a theme. The title should probably be the last thing decided, while the first page will be decided once the plot has been fully refined. I agree with an interesting title though. He provides some examples that he likes. Next, he talks about what makes good dialogue. He gives multiple examples, but doesn't dive into it with a professional level of depth. He simply has things like shocking, mellow, sad, and haiku dialogue. Next, he says, the first pages should have the five W's and one H. Who, what, where, when, why, and how. I actually don't agree with this. It can be beneficial to leave the audience with questions so that you can keep their attention and answer the question later down the line. His next tip is to offer many pieces of information simultaneously. I completely agree with this. I'll eventually have story theory videos on synthesis and dialogue, but this is something I've actually been working on. He says this tip applies to the cover image too. I guess, but I don't know how many people are analyzing a cover before they read the story. I'm definitely not. Next is, a manga's first page is its preview. He's saying that the first page should represent what the rest of the story will be like. Again, I don't completely agree. In general, maybe. But stories also have the option of having a false or red herring start. Maybe they want to have a dramatic plot twist later down the line. Even if he's just talking about the first chapter, my reply still applies. Next is seize unclaimed territory. Basically, be unique. I agree with this. After analyzing his one shot, Puso Poker, his final tip for this chapter is make them read until the end. I agree with this. Overall, ignoring the ordering of his tips. This chapter was basic and underwhelming. I didn't feel like he said anything crazy that a person couldn't intuitively know or have heard before. Chapter 2 The Four Fundamentals of Manga Structure What are his four? Characters, story, setting, and theme. Hmm, this sounds exactly the same as my four pillars of story, except in mine, story is plot, which is the correct term. Although maybe this is just a translation issue. I obviously completely agree with this, and I'm glad that Araki knows such a foundational concept, although he should have started with this. It's funny how he mentions themes, but I'll get to that later. He says these four mutually influence each other, which I agree with. He has an image that shows that theme is the biggest of the four, and that art surrounds them all. We align to a degree. I do think that the theme should usually be the biggest part, but not all stories follow that, like Jojo for example, which is made by Araki. I also think that setting should be smaller than any of the other three. Next, he says that characters and setting are indispensable and gives examples of manga that prioritize just those two. Examples are Akira, Mushishi, and Kojikame. He says it's possible for a mangaka to succeed based on characters or setting alone. End quote. I agree. I just think that their potential quality has a lower ceiling than any story that utilizes all four pillars effectively. Next, he talks about balance and says that a manga with one element that drastically stands out from the rest will always be limited in some way. End quote. I kinda agree, but I explained my philosophy just a second ago. If a story has great characters, themes, and setting, but a mind-blowing plot, the story isn't limited. There's nothing wrong with one pillar shining more than the rest as long as the rest have a competent amount of quality put into them. His next tip is to analyze the bestsellers. 
He's already said this before, and I already explained how he prioritizes sales, while I prioritize quality. Hopefully he doesn't think sales equate to quality. Once again, this chapter was basic. I like his acknowledgement of the four pillars, but he didn't say anything that insightful. Additionally, I disagree with about half of what he talks about in this chapter. This advice is not worth paying for so far. As of now, I don't recommend this book because there are better books if you're desperate to buy one. When you break it down, manga is a fusion of writing and drawing. There are better writing books like McKee's and Truby's, and there are also better art books like Mark Crilly's. Since Araki is neither elite at teaching story or art, why would I buy this book when I can buy an elite writing book and an elite art book? We agree on some things, but his depth so far is very shallow and not worthwhile. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and help me revolutionize the manga industry by buying my manga and spreading the word. All important links will be in the description.